Uh, hey everybody, um, in, in this video uh, I'm going to be doing some field work, so taking some test video with a new uh, Micro Four Thirds 4K camera, the Panasonic G85. And that's what I'm actually shooting the video with here now, so I can't show it to you. I do have my first Micro Four Thirds camera here. This is the Panasonic GH2, which I've had since early 2011, so coming up on six years, and I have a range of lenses for that. Um, and at the time I have got the GH2, uh, I was doing a lot of traveling, so I figured I'd use that as a travel camera rather than carry, you know, my big heavier, my bigger and heavier DSLRs. Uh, so I used it for that, but uh, about a year later, the um, Nikon D800E came out, and I snapped that up, and it's my go-to still camera. So uh, it's such a good camera, the, the Nikon, that I kind of put the GH2 away, um, and I wasn't doing a lot of video at the time, so I, I, you know, I didn't use it that much. But in the last year or so, I've gotten into doing a bit, uh, quite a, a bit more video, and uh, so the GH2, which is only an HD camera, uh, I was thinking, you know, let me get a 4K camera, and at the time, uh, the Panasonic flagship 4K Micro Four Thirds camera was or is the GH4 and it had been out for more than a year by that time, this is a year ago so I thought rather than get that I'll wait for the GH5 and I waited and I waited and now almost a year later we find out at Photokina that it's not going to be available for another six to nine months or longer, who knows so I decided, you know, I couldn't wait any longer and I picked up the just released G85, which is the follow-on to the G7. Now I'd seen some uh, videos on YouTube from uh, the, the G7 and I thought, you know, it's a pretty decent camera. Uh, Canon makes, I'm sorry, uh, Panasonic makes a very good Micro Four Thirds camera, so I figured I'd give that a shot. So I picked up the um, G85, received it Tuesday of this week, which is November 2nd, I think, and uh, the very next day I took it to this really cool place uh, in the southern end of the Salt Lake Valley um, at the Tintic Mine, it's a abandoned mine processing facility, so I did some um, test footage there and basically I used the default camera settings. Uh, now, the default camera setting is 1080p, so I changed that to 4K. That was one of the changes I made. So it's um, UHD uh, at 30 frames per second. That was the change. But I'm using the standard photo style, basically picture style, for the camera, and I'm not doing any adjustments with, you know, shadow highlight or anything like that. I wanted to get a baseline uh, from the camera using basically the default settings to get a baseline. So in this video, that's what I do. I shoot um, uh, quite a bit of video and some of it's I'm walking around so you get a chance to see something about the uh, image stabilization, more about that later. And some, you know, more setup shots with a, a tripod so you can see, you know, those, those shots as well. But I don't do any, you know, uh, adjustments to the picture style or anything like that. Again, I'm using the default camera settings. The only change that I did was to change from basically zero EV to minus two-thirds EV uh, because of the lighting. And you'll see in the video why that's uh, why I did that. Um, so it, it's, it's a really cool place. So I've got a good deal of video in here and you can fast forward through it if you want. Uh, the other thing to notice is um, there was quite a bit of hiking involved, a couple of miles with uh, several hundred feet of elevation gain. So uh, I got a little windage with like 5,000 feet elevation to begin with. So um, you can hear in the video using the camera's microphone me huffing and puffing as I'm walking along. And I figured I'd leave that in there because you know you want to be able to hear what the, the quality of the microphone is. Uh, and I think it's actually pretty decent. You know, it's not exactly a uh, you know, a remote shotgun microphone pointed at the uh, person's face uh, by a sound guy, but, you know, if you're by yourself, uh, they can't, the, the microphone in the um, G85, I think is pretty decent. Um, so, 
in this video, again, we're going to go to this uh, uh, abandoned mine processing facility. Uh, it's a really cool place. And at the end of it, after I've kind of done the, the pictures with the G85, I take off on my uh, Inspire One Pro drone, which also has a micro four thirds camera on it. And I take a few minutes of, of video flying over the facility uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, again, it's a really cool place, so you get a, a view of it from above, which is pretty neat. But also, it's a micro four thirds camera, so getting the uh, uh, comparison between the two, uh, the Panasonic is light years superior to DJI or um, uh, the X5 camera in the, in the DJI. Uh, but, in any case, to give you a, a perspective from another camera, 4K, micro four thirds, um, but more than that, a really cool perspective from above. And at the end, we'll do a, a little summary of that so you get to see, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about, kind of summarize what the, the findings are. There'll be another video that I'm going to do uh, here shortly. I've kind of taken some video, shot some of the raw footage of it already, but in that, I'm going to make some more adjustments using trying to get a more flatter picture profile. Um, in this video, when I check on um, the Lumetri panel uh, scopes in Premiere Pro, pretty much er all the video that I've shot on this day that you're about to see is being clipped at the highlights and at the shadow detail, so it's too spread out. You want a flatter picture profile so that you're not clipping at both ends. But again, this video is a baseline, so um, after here, we'll be going into the video. So, thanks for watching. Okay, so uh, this is the beginning of the field footage. I'm walking along this warm spring that's near the abandoned mine processing facility. Got the camera on top of a tripod, um, and I'm just using the tripod as sort of like a steady cam. Our first look of the uh, the abandoned mine facility. See the rocks towards the top are a little blown out. So this is where you get to hear me huffing and puffing. the detail in the rock there to the right. Now, out of camera, default settings, I think is a little too sharp, a little too saturated, and too much contrast. But, you know, they make these cameras for, it's a prosumer camera, so they have to figure that there are a lot of people who are just going to use the video straight out of the camera, so the default settings uh, are, are really for them. And a more serious person's going to make the adjustments necessary. Getting winded, climb several hundred feet. <sighs> Ooh. 
Boy, I could go for some dope ass lasagna. This place is like super freaking cool. Yes, I am a breather. Yeah, I think the uh, I actually think the audio is pretty decent out of the camera. Again, saturation is definitely high. All right, uh, this is the end of the 1260 for now. I'm gonna be putting the 714 on here in a minute. All right, so this is the 7 to 14, and let me put it to seven millimeters. Looks like the 7 to 14 is about a third of a stop brighter than the 1260. See the strong blown out reflections on the on the wall here. The sun is almost directly opposite or shining against it. Reflecting off it, I should say. The sun there is definitely blown out. That's at least a stop, probably more. hardly a surface that hasn't been inked up. Looks weird, just kind of plopped here in the middle of the desert. Okay, handheld seven millimeters. Light to dark. So the dark is pretty much full frame now. Exposure is compensated. And when I pan up to the brighter stuff, you can see that's a little blown out.
again, as you tilt towards the sun, you should uh, have a negative compensation in the exposure to compensate. That's minus two, uh, two thirds EV for vi video. Very strong difference between the light and dark. So, same scene at zero EV. Still minus two thirds EV, I think. I'll double check that. Yes, pre previous video was minus two thirds EV, and this is zero. Again, strong difference in light and dark. Still zero EV. And minus two thirds EV. And back to zero EV. Getting ready to switch to the 100, 300 zoom lens. Which will be the last one I use. All right, so this is the 100, 300 at 100. This is a, a road that's probably half a mile away. Again at 100 millimeters. And let me zoom in to 300 millimeters. I'm using a tripod here, but it's not a pan and tilt tripod. It's a ball head, so not terribly efficient for this. Same road, same scene at 12 millimeters with the 1260. Back to the 1260 now. So that's at least a half a mile away. It's actually about 0.6 miles. Hear the airplane? Minus two EV, or minus two thirds EV, I should say. All right, back to zero EV. Using tripod as a Kind of a steady cam. Legs are out. Give you a little bit more moment of inertia. See the focus changing as I get the foreground bushes here and then the background. All right, this is just about the end of the G85 footage. Right after this, we go into the uh, uh, Inspire 1, and here we are. So again, this is a micro four thirds camera as well, shooting in 4K, um, but it's their you know drone camera and the quality of the image processor and the software they use to compress the video, I don't think is anywhere near as good as what Panasonic has. But, uh, you know, it's a cool place. I wanted to give you a different perspective on the area and to allow you to see, uh, you know, another 4K micro four thirds camera as a sort of a comparison point. You can see from this distance, the colors are definitely more muted.
doing a climb and tilt down at the same time. And now kind of a manual orbit around it. Again, check the uh, the notes in the, the links in the in the video here if you want to learn a little bit more about this uh, abandoned mine facility. Like I said, it's uh, one of my favorite cool places in Utah, southern Utah, or southern Salt Lake Valley area. Alright, getting real close to the end of the video, uh, the, the drone portion of the video. And then after this we'll go to uh, basically a summary of you know my findings for the default settings. And that will be the end of the video. And that's about it. So stay tuned for the summary. All right, so in summary, um, I think the default settings, again, although aimed at the, the more casual consumer that doesn't do photo editing and image editing on a computer and just uses video straight out of the camera, so they bake in those default settings for those people. And, you know, more serious people, the pros obviously are going to make changes to it. But, you know, I wanted to evaluate the baseline settings and see, you know, as a, as a baseline, obviously. And frankly, I think they're not bad. I mean, it's overly sharp, overly saturated, and too much contrast. Uh, and we have some question here on the image stabilization capabilities. But yeah, bottom line, uh, you know, the video doesn't, doesn't look bad. And I think the audio quality uh, is also not bad. Uh, it's not, you know, like a, uh, a shotgun mic pointed by a sound guy directly at, the, at your mouth. But, you know, given the limitations of, of, uh, of that, I think the, the audio quality is not bad. Uh, you know, I do a little huffing and puffing, obviously, but in any case, I think the, um, the, the, the basic settings are okay. The limitation here is that with the high contrast setting in the default standard uh, photo style, you result in, it results in clipping at highlights and shadow in all the video clips, even the ones that look pretty good. Uh, on, when I look at the Lumetri scopes in Premiere Pro, I can see clipping. Basically, every clip has got clipping in it uh, at, at both ends. So, by compressing the uh, video, the, the dynamic range in the video, using different settings in the camera, you avoid that. Um, and it'll also make uh, some of the scenes where, you know, kind of looking towards the sun and the sky is really blown out, um, by having the video compressed to begin with, that's less of a problem. But generally speaking, when you look, shoot towards the sun, you probably want to use two-thirds or more negative minus exposure compensation. When you're shooting you know, like 90 degrees to the sun, you know, where it's at the side, pretty much zero. And when you're shooting away from the sun, so that the sun is at your back, you can actually go about plus two-thirds or more, uh, and it depends. So, um, we'll explore the 
more advanced settings in the next video. And again, this video was pretty much to, to get a handle on the default settings and cursory uh, evaluation after just a few days. I think it's not bad. Obviously the resolution is great. Um, the audio is, is not bad. Um, and the baked in settings, the default settings, not ideal, but you know, for the average person who isn't going to be doing a lot of editing on a computer, usable. <laughs> Obviously very usable. So, uh, thanks for watching, and again, uh, stay tuned for the next video, which will be a more advanced settings uh, video. So, thanks for watching.